Hello, I'm Liz Zorab and I live with my partner here on our just over three quarters of an acre small holding in South Wales. This is by the farm. Over the last four years uh, I have developed uh, this half acre paddock into um, a food forest and an annual vegetable garden, a flower garden and now a very small market garden as well and I've used some permaculture practices uh, to do that so uh, as you can see uh, the ducks uh, work in the food forest um, clearing slugs and snails uh, keeping down the weeds uh, and then they provide us eggs uh, and endless entertainment and to make the most of the space that we have I try and make sure everything has more than one purpose so um, this fence that goes around the vegetable garden um, to give it some protection uh, and to give me some vertical space to grow on um, it's made from pallets so it's recycled wood and they go straight along and then the pallets also come out at this angle which means that each section uh, can become either a compost bay or like this one for water collection or like this one uh, where I've recycled a really long pallet uh, and reused uh, somebody's double sink that was being thrown out so I've created uh, an outdoor sink uh, to wash my vegetables and also to help me uh, when I'm potting plants on. I use wood chips for pathways uh, and it takes a couple of years for them to break down uh, into a rich, fine compost. And when that's ready, uh, I then scoop it up and put it into the raised beds uh, to add organic matter into them. We're situated really close to the River Severn uh, and have coastal breezes uh, and westerly winds. So it's actually a really windy site. And to help combat some of that, uh, I've created a series of rooms uh, with wind breaks uh, all the way through so there's a section uh, where the ducks are that has hedges and fences the vegetable garden uh, has these pallet fences but I'm also uh, growing roses uh, across those fences and other climbers uh, to create vertical height to slow the wind down um, but also uh, I then use the petals uh, but mostly the rose hips for cooking the gardens are very much uh, a work in progress and I suspect they always will be uh, as we get to know them more and to understand the land more and as our understanding of the planting uh, increases. And one of the things I've done uh, is to experiment uh, with lots of perennial vegetables uh, so things like uh, this climbing spinach uh, which is great because it's around uh, during the hungry gap uh, at this time of year. Uh, but also perennial kales and cabbages and tubers and also uh, I've been planning our meals and what we will eat uh, more focused on uh, what we have available here and less and less uh, needing to rely on what we can get in the shops. About 85% of the food and drink on our table uh, now comes uh, from our land and I garden uh, using no-dig methods, um, mulching deeply. This field was in a uh, very poor condition when we moved in and it's really nice to see how quickly it is returning uh, to have some quite good soil life and the actual soil's getting in better condition and we've certainly got a much more wildlife uh, living around us. I've been trying to create beds that are highly ornamental uh, but also really practical at the same time. Uh, so uh, I'm using herbs uh, and edible plants uh, to create what I think is something really pretty. It really hasn't taken us uh, very long to create a very fruitful <laughs> and productive garden. So I'm Martin Crawford of the Agroforestry Research Trust. I founded the Agroforestry Research Trust in 1990. Before that I've been an organic market gardener with my wife, growing annual vegetables to sell and uh, and then over a period of a year or two, I discovered lots of different things. I discovered what permaculture was doing. I discovered what Robert Hart was doing up in Shropshire, the first experiments in forest gardening or food forestry in Britain. Uh, sustainability of land use, it became clear to me, cannot depend on annual cultivation of soil because that just 
gives loads of carbon into the air every time you do it. Uh, and so um, I started this forest garden in Darterton uh, in 1994. So this is our, uh, one of our most established uh, forest gardens. Um, uh, over the time, of course, this is established. I've learned more about these systems uh, and, um, and my ideas have slightly changed as well. And now, of course, worldwide, the, the greatest threat we face is carbon, carbon in the air. And, uh, and so in terms of sustainable land use, the most important thing now is to store carbon. So, you know, everybody's definition may be different, but my definition of what is sustainable in terms of land use, first and foremost, it's got to be storing carbon, and quite a lot preferably. Uh, after that come all the other things, of course, of looking after your soil uh, uh, and all the other things that come with sustainable land use. But, um, but if you put carbon up there first, then what follows from that are these kind of systems, forest garden or food forest systems, because these are the systems that give you crops and store a load of carbon as well. They store carbon across woody, woody plants in their, in their biomass, um, and perennial plants and woody plants store masses of carbon in the soil as well. through those two, two things, you can be actually storing a huge amount of carbon, uh, you know, in, in the order of four or five tonnes per hectare per year, um, uh, is what's happening here, uh, and still have a productive system with lots of different crops. Hi, I'm Anne Stobart. I'm a medical herbalist, and I'm passionate about herbs, especially medicinal trees. My background is in education as well as being a herbal practitioner and I've written a book about medicinal trees and shrubs and other plants called The Medicinal Forest Garden Handbook published by Permanent Publications. So this is our fairly small cottage garden, spring so it's not as green as it will be later in the year. and. We use all the spaces, the walls, the fences, and we have layers of plants as well. Herbs are fantastic. They're so complex. They can be used in so many different ways. with my partner to have started a medicinal woodland also in Devon where we can grow more trees and shrubs but we do manage to fit in quite a few in this little garden using all the space available trees and walls so I'm very keen on herbs particularly because of their complexity they can produce synergy in their action there's so many 
constituents. And I've written about the possibilities of growing medicinal plants in the permaculture magazine. Hello, I'm one of the Seed Sisters and we've been asked what permaculture means to us. Permaculture is intricately linked with sustainability and to me it's all about observation, really looking at things and taking stock of what all your resources are and utilising those resources in the best possible way. So taking a step back, looking around your space, your home, the place that you live, the relationships that you have, maybe the wider society and seeing what you can draw on. My primary objective and us as Seed Sisters, our primary objective is good health, good physical, emotional, psychological and spiritual health. And not just for me, for my family, my friends, my community and the whole of society, our global society. Good health and I believe we can achieve good health by connecting with our local plants, the real, the resources that I talked about earlier. Today I'm making a salad from foods that I've foraged and harvested from my village and my garden. We've got the wood sorrel in here, this delicious tangy sour taste, and the familiar dandelion leaf. Dandelion leaf is a delicious bitter and bitter flavours in herbal medicine denote a digestive property. So these are the greens alongside I picked the hawthorn leaves. Hawthorn leaves are known as bread and cheese and they're full of minerals. All of these spring greens are so mineral rich. I picked some majoram from my front garden, this lovely aromatic that's often put on your pizzas, really easy to grow and gives this uplifting scented flavour in the salad. I went to the greenhouse to pick the, the pea shoots, so on the, the pea plants these early shoots are tender and lovely but it's good to pinch those out. So they'll go in. I've got fennel leaves, I'm going to snip the fennel leaves in here. Hildegard von Bingen, the famous Germanic herbalist and musician, she was a nun, she famously said that fennel forces the spirits into the correct balance of joy and this bowl of salad is a truly joyful thing. I've got the calendula, I pick the petals off and those colours are so pleasing. The greens and the oranges as they combine. One of my neighbours was doing her dissertation on how the colours of nature affect the rods and cones in our eyes and how that in turn affects our hormone system. So just seeing these kind of colours mixed together is uplifting and healing in itself. Got the lovely primula, primrose flowers, very delicate and a delicious light flavour and these flowers are relaxing and calming. What else have we got here? Pick the daisy, the Bellis perennis. Daisy is a flower that connects us into childhood. Who hasn't made a daisy chain? And picked the flowers, the, the petals and asked, he loves me, he loves me not. So it becomes a fun, a game, creating this salad. What else have we got? I've picked some rosemary and it's just the rosemary, the beautiful mint shaped flowers because it's part of the uh, the mint family that I pick and I, I find it again really joyful seeing the colours mix of the purples and the oranges and the greens and something that we do in our household is have a sprouter on our window ledge we buy alpha alpha seeds and other seeds like cress and we sprout them and these sprouted seeds are packed full of dense nutrients 
great addition to all of our salads and super easy to grow and if you haven't got a garden this is one of the resources that you can easily do. And to top the salad we grow pumpkins in our greenhouse and come the autumn I cut the pumpkins and I save the seeds from all of the squashes and these seeds are full of the omega fatty acids that are so important to our nervous system and the benefit of all of our health. So I just sprinkle those seeds on top of our salad, give it a good mix and just use a bit of olive oil. And voila, a delicious forage salad, homegrown ingredients and picked from the hedgerows. I hope you've enjoyed this and I really encourage you to go out yourselves and see what you can find in a short walking distance from your own home. Seeds is 